Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. We will adopt what is called as the mixture fraction formulation in trying to describe diffusion flames. This is actually a powerful idea uh, for combustion in general and uh, uh, with, with particular context of diffusion flames and partially premixed flames. So the idea basically is we now try to uh, define this variable called the mixture fraction. Mixture fraction extremely useful in in diffusion flames and partially premixed flames. So what what we will do is let's consider a. Uh, a two feed system that means we have two inlets that are uh, allowing gases to come so we are looking at a homogeneous gaseous system and uh, let us say that uh, um, one represents fuel stream and two represents oxidizer stream. In fact we will try to uh, adopt uh, this for a general hydrocarbon fuel, hydrocarbon oxidation that means when we na now say oxidizer we will uh, mainly be thinking about O2 and for the fuel uh, we might mainly be thinking about uh, a CM HN kind of hydrocarbon. Right. So then the way the mixture fraction is defined is essentially like a mass fraction okay. So the mixture fraction mixture fraction um, represents the mass fraction mass fraction of the fuel in the mixture. fuel in the mixture right that means um, let us say Z is the symbol given to mixture fraction then this is basically M dot 1 divided by M dot 1 plus M dot 2 where M dot 1 is the mass flux of uh, or the mass flow rate of the um, fuel stream m.1 is uh, m.2 is the mass flow rate of the oxidizer stream and of course what this means is uh, the mass fraction of the oxidizer then is oxidizer in the mixture is then 1 minus z all right it would be defined as m2 dot divided by m1 dot plus m2 dot therefore it is 1 minus z. Now each stream contains diluents it is not as if like the fuel stream is fully fuel you could have some nitrogen uh, you could also have uh, the, the oxidizer stream is like a let us say air and most of it is nitrogen so you have only part of it is oxygen so uh, contains diluents different extents right 
then what you are looking at is uh, the mass fraction of the unburned fuel in the mixture what we expect is it should be proportional to the inlet mass fraction of the fuel uh, in the fuel stream times the mixture fraction. So the mixture fraction is a fraction of fuel when compared to the total so the, the, the mass fraction of the unburned fuel in the mixture is proportional to, to the inlet fuel mass fraction so that is uh, to say um, yf comma comma u that is the unburned fuel mass fraction anywhere in the mixture can then be written as z times yf comma 1 so yf comma 1 is essentially the mass fraction fuel mass fraction at uh, uh, in at the inlet to stream 1 right now previously we were using the symbol yf not for this purpose the corresponding oxidizer would be yo not well this allows for us to actually think about a yf2 which means you could also dope some fuel into the oxidizer stream and vice versa all right so this notation some somewhat is a little bit more general of course it is not too general it is still confining ourselves to two streams all right but but we could say yf1 yf2 yf3 and so on okay so this is a little bit more general notation then and similarly the unburned the unburned uh, oxidizer mass fraction the unburnt oxidizer mass fraction uh, is y o 2 u is equal to 1 minus z times y o 2 comma 2 right so so y o 2 comma 2 is is actually the oxidizer mass fraction at uh, inlet to stream 2 so for example if it were air this number would be like 0.23 or so right with this we should, if you now think about it um, what happens is your unburnt fuel uh, mass fraction or the unburnt oxidizer mass fraction both vary with the mixture fraction z linearly okay in other words if z were more your y of u would be more at any at, at a place proportional to y of 1 right if z were more y o 2 unburnt will be less correspondingly um, proportional to y o 2 2 so if this is represented in a graph that could go like this so if you now plot z along the horizontal axis it goes from 0 to 1 so if your mixture fraction is going all the way from 0 to 1 0 would correspond to no fuel and 1 would correspond to um, all fuel all right no oxidizer and therefore as z keeps on increasing then you have a straight line that keeps on increasing from 0 all the way to y of 1 this is to say in the mixing field at the inlet you would have only oxidizer in the oxidizer stream and you will have no fuel at all in the 
you, you would have you would have YF1 in the fuel stream and you would have no fuel in the oxidizer stream and anywhere else in the mixing field you would now have a mixture fraction which is having different values and corresponding to that the fuel mass fraction would lie on this line essentially all right. Similarly if you want to think about how the so this, this, is, this is the plot of yf, u similarly if you want to look at the plot of y o2, u that is another straight line that starts with the value of y o2, u let us say at the oxidizer stream inlet where you do not have any fuel and uh, goes all the way to 0 at the fuel inlet where you do not have any oxidizer anywhere in the mixing field your mass fraction of the oxidizer lies on this line corresponding to whatever is the mixture fraction locally right. So this is regarding how the unburnt fuel uh, and unburnt oxidizer mass fractions work out. What we want to now do is to further proceed and see if we can actually get mass fractions of burnt products right and where you have where you are in non stoichiometric proportions you will have excess fuel and excess or excess oxidizer depending upon which is in excess whether you are in fuel rich or fuel lean conditions and we would like to also find out what is the burnt fuel concentration and the burnt oxidizer concentration depending upon whether it is excess or not. So for which we need now have to actually go through what happens when you have a reaction. So uh, in a reaction we had this is long ago uh, we, we came up with this d y1 divided by w1 times nu1 double prime minus nu1 single prime etc. Uh, we could, we could also write of course one more dy2 divided by w2 times nu2 double prime minus nu2 single prime etc. and the general ith species you could say dyi divided by wi times nu i double prime minus nu i single prime I am sure you recall this. So let us suppose that you can call this set of equations a star we will pick at least two of these in order to integrate it at different times in the, in the um, near future. So for a single single component general hydrocarbon that is to say you do not have different different mixtures of hydrocarbons for example if you take liquid petroleum gas it is actually a mixture of hydrocarbons butane and propane. So instead of that if let us suppose that we are considering only one hydrocarbon at a time um, hydrocarbon fuel and uh, let us suppose that uh, we write this equation as nu of single prime Cm Hn for the generalized hydrocarbon that we considered plus um, nu O2 single prime O2 gives nu uh, CO2 double prime CO2 plus nu H2O double prime H2O right with uh, nu F single prime equal to 1 fixed arbitrarily let us suppose that uh, we just say we are interested in one mole of this hydrocarbon right um, we could get nu O2 single prime equal to M plus N divided by 4. Uh, nu CO2 double prime equal to M and uh, nu H2O double prime equal to N over 2 uh, 
uh, as stoichiometric coefficients that means these values correspond to the reaction happening stoichiometrically right that means you do not have any uh, any of the fuel or oxidizer left over as part of the products right. Now at the stoichiometric surface in the mixing field we then have the number of moles of oxygen um, unburnt divided by the number of moles of um, fuel unburnt at stoichiometry equal to mu O2 single prime divided by nu F single prime right as, as given above. So in terms of mass fractions so this is this is moles fractions so in terms of mass fractions well above is in terms of moles not moles fractions I am sorry but of course you can divide by the total number of moles and get the moles fractions as well. So here we are going to be looking at the mass fractions Y O2 unburnt divided by Y F unburnt at stoichiometry is new O2 single prime molecular weight times molecular weight of oxygen divided by new fuel single prime times WF which let us we let us say we call as new which is the stoichiometric mass ratio. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can um, integrate this equation for a situation where you have a stoichiometric reaction so that we can we can make use of the fact that you are not going to have any of the reactants left over all right. So um, for a stoichiometric reaction. For a stoichiometric reaction both fuel and oxidizer are completely consumed right therefore we use this to integrate the um, this equation here star um, at any mixture condition relative to the unburnt mixture because you are not going to have any, any of the reactants left over so you can you can, uh, you can now say uh, we integrate star at uh, any mixture condition. That means you can look at any intermediate mixture condition, uh, mixture condition uh, relative to the unburned condition. Right. That means the the limits of integration go from unburned values to any value. Uh, during the reaction as uh, YO2 minus YO2 comma U divided by nu O2 prime WO2 right you, still, you can you can just pick 
let us say oxidizer and uh, fuel then you would get yf divided by minus yfu divided by nu f single prime wf or rearranging this all this means is nu yf minus yo2 equals nu yf u um, minus y o 2 u right. So what this tells us is this is sort of a preserved quantity right you started out with unburnt values y f u and y o 2 u at a point in the mixture mixing field in a proportion with a new here right where um, um, should I should I have uh, yes new that is right you got this new so and that is the same even during the reaction between the two that is essentially the idea okay. So whatever is the unburned uh, values that difference is, is what is preserved. So what you can then do is we, we, we are interested in writing everything in terms of the mixture fraction. So we, we had the y of u in terms of mixture fraction and the inlet mass fraction. So here y o 2 u in terms of mixture fraction and the inlet mass fraction of the oxidizer. So substituting uh, the expressions for expressions for uh, y of u and uh, y o 2 u in terms of z. in here we get um, and then of course rearrange so you say z equals nu times yf minus yo2 plus yo2 comma 2 divided by nu yf comma 1 plus y o 2 comma 2 so you can see that y o 2 comma 2 y f 1 y f comma 1 these things are showing up from the inlet mass concentrations mass mass fractions of the oxidizer and fuel in the respective streams. So for stoichiometric mixture for stoichiometric mixture nu f nu y f I am sorry should be equal to y o 2 in fact this is what we had also got for um, the Bergschumann solution where we said gamma is equal to 0 means beta is equal to 0 that means alpha f minus alpha o is equal to 0 right and that amounted to exactly this we say y f divided by y o 2 is um, uh, or rather y yeah uh, y o 2 divided by y f should be equal to nu and that should be the same as y f uh, y o 2 u divided by y o y f u right. The unburnt mass fractions should be in stoichiometric proportions just as well as whatever is in the reaction okay. So from this what we can do is uh, this will actually now tell us what should be the uh, stoichiometric mass fraction right so the stoichiometric mass fraction stoichiometric mass fraction is zst equal to 1 plus nu yf comma 1 divided by y o 2 comma 2 the whole to the minus 1 
you should be able to show that right if you now say this is going to go away right then you rearrange um, what this tells us is there is a particular value of z which is the stoichiometric mixture fraction naturally and it is related to how the inlet stream mass fractions of fuel and oxidizer work out right. So if uh, z is less than z is t right we are less in fuel so as z keeps on increasing you have more and more fuel that is essentially the idea so if z is less than z is t we know clearly that it is fuel deficient right. deficient or fuel lean whichever way you want to right then uh, yf, yf burnt is going to be 0 this is, this is now the mass fraction of uh, fuel in the burnt products so you are not going to have any excess fuel in the in the product therefore you can now substitute yfb uh, equal to 0. Uh, which, which terminates the combustion right so the com combustion uh, essentially um, does not proceed simply because you run, run out of fuel you do not have any more fuel um, so plug in uh, plug plug this in uh, in in z expression right and uh, use uh, definition of z as t you should now get so we now plug in um, the, in the expression for z yfb is equal to 0 then from there you now rewrite you should get yo2 comma b equal to yo2 comma 2 times 1 minus z divided by z as t for z less than or equal to z as t similarly for fuel rich mixture right combustion terminates when a uh, y o 2 b equal to 0 so you now plug this in the expression for z and rewrite uh, for y f b you now get an expression y f comma b equal to y f comma 1 times z minus z s t divided by 1 minus z s t. and uh, this is this this is valid for z greater than or equal to z s t that means we can now draw a picture similar to this this is for the unburned fuel and unburnt oxidizer in the mixing field but we can now anticipate how the unburned sorry the burnt fuel and burnt oxidizer should look like if you now have z going in the horizontal axis from 0 to 1 somewhere in there you should now be able to locate z equal to z s t now that that become that becomes an important thing whether are we on this side of um, z s t or that side of z s t because this is going to correspond to a fuel lean situation that is going to correspond to an oxidizer um, lean situation therefore we should now get your yfb 
is valid only for z greater than zst right on this side your y of b is equal to 0 therefore you can and, and this is also linear in z okay um, so this goes so your y f comma b is going to go all the way to from 0 to y f comma 1 right as a matter of fact when you go to this this corner when z is equal to 1 your y f is equal to y f 1 you know um, and uh, so sorry z goes to 1 so y f b goes to y f 1 all right and this is what we were looking at in the last class where at the flame you now have the uh, fuel concentration go all the way to uh, 0 and then stay flat on the other side. So here the fuel is going to go all the way from the fuel inlet stream all the way down to 0 at the stoichiometric surface and then lie flat on the oxidizer rich side right um, and similarly you now have a straight line that goes from 0 here backwards to YO22 in the mixing field. So essentially if it is possible for us to now go back and redo the Berg Schumann problem in terms of Z instead of beta which is not very different if you think about it all right uh, and that is also possible then you can actually look at contours of Z several contours of Z and depending upon the contours of the values of Z you now try to actually look at what the values of YFB and YF, YO2B should be you now can map how the uh, fuel concentration and oxidizer concentration should show up this is still for the excess fuel the side for the products and excess oxidizer in the products for fuel rich side and fuel lean side still have not talked about the actual products of combustion right like CO2 and H2O. So for getting the product um, concentrations we should do something similar to what we have done here in order to obtain your new, new CO2 double prime and new H2O double prime all we have done by saying we are balancing this reaction is to basically conserve atoms we, we compared carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, oxygen atoms and then came up with these things. So we, we conserve uh, atoms across the chemical reaction. to obtain product mass fractions as a function of Z. So still we are interested in what happens as a function of the mixture fraction Z and that is a hero for the day mixture fraction so we keep on looking at everything as a function of Z. So element mass fractions so you look at what happens in the unburnt uh, mixture element mass fraction in the unburnt mixture so look at um, the fraction of carbon atoms so you had uh, m carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon right so this is m times molecular weight of carbon atom divided by the molecular weight of the fuel right times y f comma u so this this is the mass fraction of the unburnt fuel times this fraction is what is going to give you the carbon fraction similarly if you now look at zh that is going to be n times wh divided by w fuel times yfu for the oxygen it is mainly coming from the oxidizer stream so we might as well just write zo equal to yo2u whatever is the mass fraction of the oxygen in um, the uh, 
oxidizer stream unburnt right is e zero zero of course from here we should now be able to also write um, C C that uh, Y of U is equal to W F times N um, Z C divided by W C plus M uh, did I make a mistake um, Z H by W W uh, W H all right on the burnt side um, on the burnt side for the products uh, the, 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 the the element mass fraction or for the carbon we have ZC equal to MWC divided by WF by F comma B that is actually for if you have excess burnt fuel right plus if carbon is also there in carbon dioxide that is what we are more interested in WCO2 times CO2 burnt and this is what we are trying to find out in terms of Z okay and uh, hydrogen is going to be like N times WH divided by WF YF comma B plus twice because um, water contains two hydrogen atoms so WH divided by WH2O times YH2O comma B this is also the next thing that we are trying to find out in terms of Z currently so and finally we have to conserve oxygen atoms so ZO from the products would be twice um, WO divided by WO2 YO2 comma B plus twice WO divided by WCO2 because there are two, two oxygen atoms in carbon dioxide YCO2 comma B plus 1 WO divided by WH2O YH2O comma B right. So now if, if you now equate these so use YFU and YO2U in terms of Z in um, ZC ZH ZO um, and rewrite okay. So you then get YCO2B would be YCO2 stoichiometric times Z divided by ZST and uh, YH2O comma B equal to YH2O stoichiometric times Z divided by Z stoichiometric this is for Z less than or equal to Z, ZST or y c o 2 comma b equal to y c o 2 stoichiometric times 1 minus z divided by 1 minus z stoichiometric and uh, y h 2 o comma b equal to y h 2 o stoichiometric times 1 minus z divided by 1 minus Z, Z ST this is for Z greater than or equal to Z ST where 
we have to say what is y c o two stoichiometric and y h two o stoichiometric. So y c o two stoichiometric is y f comma one z s t times m w c o two divided by w f and uh, y h two o comma stoichiometric is y f comma one z s t n w h two o divided by w f all right so what do you what do you expect we can still see that y c o 2 is still going linearly as z y h 2 is going linearly as z so long as z is less than z s t y c o 2 is still going linearly but decreasing with z y h 2 is decreasing linearly with z as z is greater than right. So let us think about plotting this. So you still have z along the horizontal axis going from 0 to 1 and we now locate the stoichiometric surface um, at somewhere in between and we noticed earlier from that picture just to reproduce your y f comma b goes from 0 at the z equal to z stoichiometric to y f comma 1 when z is equal to 1 this is the excess burnt fuel and uh, you now have y o 2 comma b going all the way up to y o 2 comma 2 at z equal to 0 but what we are looking for now is how this varies y c o 2 goes to a peak value at z equal to z s t and then comes all the way down to 0 so this is your y c o 2 comma b and similarly of course depending upon uh, the numbers you should now get a similar uh, set of lines for y h 2 comma b so it reaches a peak value you get the same expression same same numbers I should say uh, from both the expressions uh, at z equal to z s t you can plug that and then and then see what happens right now we are still interested in the temperature so for temperature all these things are essentially like looking at an equilibrium you see so for the temperature uh, we now say for an adiabatic flame right for an adiabatic flame we have the unburnt enthalpy equal to the burnt enthalpy and uh, it is probably a good time to stop I will just stop here.